Hey everybody, welcome back to the Revelation Bible Study. My name is David Kenny, and I am the pastor of Walden Community Church here in Montgomery, Texas. It's 2020, and this summer, this year, we decided we would go through the entire book of Revelation, but we're going to do it in little tiny bite-sized chunks. And so you can go back through all of these videos here on YouTube and you'll see that each one of our videos is only you know, between five or 10 minutes long. And so you can binge through them or just watch them one at a time. You can skip, go out of order. It really doesn't matter. We're just glad you're here. Go ahead and grab your Bibles and you can read along with us. We're still in Revelation chapter two and we're gonna pick up at verse 14. Uh, this is Jesus writing his letter to the church in Pergama. Verse 14 says, but I have a few things against you. Jesus always writes to these churches and he starts with something positive to say and then he closes with some things that maybe they could improve upon. But I have a few of these things against you. You have some there who hold the teaching of Balaam, who taught Balak to put a stumbling block before the sons of Israel so that they might eat food, sacrifice to idols, and practice sexual immorality. Who is Balaam? Balaam was a prophet of Israel in the Old Testament. In the book of Numbers, he was instructed to curse the people of Israel. But instead of cursing Israel, he goes back to the Moabites, the people who hired him, and he says, if you want to destroy their bloodline, here's how you do it. He says, allow them to intermarry and contaminate their bloodline with pagan uh, people. So he lures them away with sexual immorality and idol worship. In other words, if you want to destroy a culture, the best way to do it isn't with weapons or with warfare. The best way is to tempt them with pleasures of the flesh and have them destroy themselves. So maybe this church in Pergama was allowing this type of marriage. Uh, uh, Christians marrying pagans and thus it would contaminate the faith, contaminate what they believed in the church. What does verse 15 say? So also you have with some who hold to the teachings of the Nicolaitans. So who's that? Who are the Nicolaitans? Well, they were an extremely liberal version of Christianity. They were kind of a go with the flow theology. They allowed much of what culture was teaching and a lot of the things that Christianity prohibited. And their idea was to maybe to blend the church in with society so that they didn't stand out. So they gave in to culture. They gave in to compromise. Jesus says in verse 16, Therefore repent. If not, I will come to you soon and war against them with the sword of my mouth. So Jesus says stop. Jesus says repent. Repent means stop what you're doing. Stop going the direction you're going. You're going the wrong way. You're no longer following me. Stop and go back, return to obeying me again. And if you don't stop, Jesus says, then he's gonna bring the fight to them. Well, who are the, who are the them? Well, the people that are spreading the false teaching, right? Remember, Jesus commended the church. He said good things about the church. He says, you know, I see you. I see what you're facing. I see that you're in the middle of evil practices everywhere and you're in the thick of it. Jesus says, I get it. But, he tells the people, tell those people in your community who are spreading false teaching to stop. If you love them, tell them to stop. Otherwise, Jesus says, I'm going to come and I'm going to cut this out. Of them. Have you ever had to do that? Talk to somebody about what's going on in their life? Things you've noticed? Maybe, maybe not. We don't like to judge, right? We don't like to get involved, maybe. We don't want to be that person. We kind of just leave well enough alone. And I know that we say things like, yeah, I don't want to hurt their feelings. And I don't want to lose them as a friend. And maybe it's just easier to ignore it. Maybe I'm actually being more loving by not saying anything. Are we really being more loving by leaving it alone? Revelation is a letter from God. And God says to the church, if you don't fix it amongst yourselves, I 
will come and fix it. I don't think we want God to come and fix it because I've read the story of Noah's Ark. Who would you rather hear it from anyway? I mean, if it were you, your friend or God? Ignoring the problem in someone else's life is not an act of love. No, addressing the sin is an act of love. Jesus says, if you love them, you will set them straight. If you love them, you will help them. Besides, more often than not, people know. People know when they're sinning, don't they? We know when things are wrong in our own life. And true, we justify it sometimes. We say, well, at least I'm not worshiping snakes. Yeah, but you're having an affair and you're not being faithful. Well, at least I don't hit my wife and I don't hit my kids. Yeah, but you have secret addictions like drugs and alcohol and pornography. You know, those people are the worst in the world. At least I'm not hurting anyone. Well, technically you're hurting yourself. I'm a pretty good person. Yes, but pretty good people don't go to heaven. If you think you're going to heaven because you're nice or because you give to charity or because you've never hit your kids, you're wrong. None of those things save you. The Bible says we are all sinners. Yes, I try to live a good life, but not because I think it saves me. It's because I love God. Jesus closes his letter with, in verse 17 with, He who has an ear, let them hear what the Spirit says to the teachers. To the one who conquers, I will give some of the hidden manna, and I will make him a white stone with a name written on that stone that no one knows except the one who receives it. Jesus says, if you have ears and you can hear these words, don't ignore this warning. And he instructs us to listen. The Bible instructs us to listen. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.